Would you like caring for your loved one to be easier? Then this webinar is for you. I'm Dr. Deborah Beer, Director of Special Populations. Thank you for joining us today. Our presenter today is Dr. Deborah Beer, PhD. Dr. Beer is the Director of Special Populations for Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care. She has a doctorate in therapeutic counseling and a certificate in gerontology, as well as 25 plus years as a psychotherapist and home care director of care. She's also had a part in the development of the Comfort Care and At Your Side's proprietary training, DementiaWise. Comfort Care and At Your Side Home Care is an international non-medical home care agency. We provide non-medical home care and companion and personal care services and specialize in delivering dementia care services. Here's Dr. Beer. Today we'll talk about establishing reasonable expectations. We'll focus on feelings. We'll talk also about respecting personal preferences and making care person-centered, watching your emotions, and making sure that the person you're caring for can see. And then we'll talk about some additional resources. But first I wanna say, this presentation is for educational purposes only, and it should not be intended to be a diagnosis or serve as a substitute for actual medical advice. Seek help from a licensed medical professional for health concerns or diagnoses. Let's talk about the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. They're very often confused. Dementia is a group of symptoms that involve cognitive impairment, and there are many, many types of dementia. Alzheimer's is one of those types, and we hear about that the most. It's the most commonly diagnosed. All Alzheimer's is dementia, but not all dementia is Alzheimer's. It's the same as all poodles are dogs, but not all dogs are poodles. All Fords are cars, but not all cars are Fords. Let's talk about establishing reasonable expectations for the person who has dementia. DementiaWise employs evidence-based behavioral interventions to help people living with dementia optimize what abilities they still have left. All care practices are designed uh, to serve clients at all stages of dementia and all types of dementia. We use person-centered approach to care and we incorporate meaningful activities based on a person's interests and their abilities and skills that are still remaining. We provide support and information to family members. And our mission is to help you become a more effective caregiver. Our goal is to help people with dementia to remain independent for as long as possible. Now, independence doesn't mean that they'll be totally able to operate on their own. Independence means that they'll be able to participate in their care and do as many things as their abilities allow them to do. And these ongoing small victories of having someone help care for themselves are really what we're after. While full independence may be unlikely with dementia, the type of small victories we're looking for is to help them participate more fully in activities and care tasks, uh, to be able to move maybe from full assistance to partial assistance, or maybe from partial assistance to greater independence depending upon their abilities and skills. In the end, we want them to be happy and to enjoy um, having fewer challenging behaviors. Let's talk about what challenging behavior means in dementia. Challenging behavior, as I define it, is any behavior that's unsafe, dangerous, destructive, or highly upsetting to the person with dementia or to others. Now, notice I didn't say irritating or annoying because families have been irritating and annoying each other for a very long time, and we're not going to eliminate that. We need to really focus on the behaviors that are dangerous and unsafe and destructive. Um, we can't change all unwanted behavior now, and we couldn't change it before they had dementia. And we also have to ask, is this behavior, if it's just unusual or annoying, is it, is it really dangerous? Is it something we can let go? We can't fully control other people, and we have to choose what to focus on. There are five methods we're going to talk about, and the first one is to focus on feelings. The greatest success we can have to create 
better days for a person with dementia is to help them have more positive emotional experiences. All interactions, all care tasks can become positive emotional experiences for both the person with dementia as well as for their caregivers. The small positive experiences really mount up and create greater cooperation and acceptance of care. When the people with dementia have a good day, you know that the caregivers will have a good day too. So this is a positive experience for everyone. It's important to focus on feelings because when someone with dementia is happier, they'll function better. And family caregivers, you know the best ways to make your loved ones have positive emotional experiences. You know how to influence their mood already. The reason that we have to focus on emotional well-being with dementia is that with almost all types of dementia, the person retains all of their emotional abilities up until the end of life. They have all of the human emotions that people with dementia have. And they also have something I call emotional accuracy, which means when we see them, uh, we can tell if they're happy or sad or angry or upset. People with dementia can accurately understand our body language, and they can read our emotions often with greater accuracy than we can, because often as caregivers, we're not focusing on our body language, but on care tasks. So people with dementia often pick up what we're feeling more quickly than we are ourselves. People with dementia also can retain a feeling over time, even if they can't recall what caused that feeling. So for example, if they wake up on the wrong side of the bed in the morning because something negative happened, they may retain that feeling for many hours even though they can't remember the cause of it. They can also consistently associate emotions with people, places, and things, even if they don't remember um, the, those people, places, or things. For example, they may be able to look at someone who they had some kind of a positive experience with and automatically feel this is a good person, even though they don't recall ever having met before. Second method is that we need to respect personal preferences. You know, we all need to feel that we are known and understood and respected. And that goes for people with and without dementia. People with dementia retain a sense of their own personal preferences through the very end of life, just like they had before they had dementia. Uh, these preferences normally change over time, just like yours and mine, uh, but they're, they're pretty stable uh, nonetheless. And we need to respect their, their preferences with dementia. We will have a lot more successful interactions if we do. When we respect their personal preferences, it lets them know that we think they're important enough to keep happy. So what are your loved one's preferences? Do you know them? Do you consider your loved one's preferences when you're working with them eating, bathing, dressing, uh, waking in the morning, or going to bed at night? Uh, the activities or hobbies that you're doing, such as you know, music, entertainment, any other hobbies that they have uh, had an interest in and can do. Preferences uh, they, they would still hold are for people who might care for them or who might visit over time. When we can meet their personal preferences and keep them safe, then let's do that. Uh, this will increase their cooperation and their positive emotions. The third method is to make care person-centered. We hear a lot about person-centered care, um, so let's talk a little, about, a little bit about what that might mean. We always want to put the person before the care task. We want to focus on their feelings and not on accomplishing the care task, even though that is in the end what we're trying to do. People are going to do better with dementia when they feel personally connected to the caregiver rather than the task. So first, we want to make a warm connection, and that's really key to success. You know, as human beings, we need warm connections. So always make a warm connection before every single care task and whenever things are not going well. There are many ways to make a warm connection. Here are some suggestions. You want to get down and stay at their level, their eye level. You want to maybe hold hands or use some other kind of positive touch. Positive touch meaning I care for you, I'm comforting you, I'm connecting to you, not no, 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 you've done something wrong kind of touch. 
You want to smile and look relaxed and make eye contact, and you want to express that you're happy to be with that person. You want to use the name that they prefer. Maybe you want to sing a song together or sing for them, something that they know and that they've loved from the past. Tell jokes together and laugh, um, even if the punchline doesn't make any sense. It's the shared emotion and experience that's important. And then you want to maybe view or discuss photos or drawings that they like, uh, something that's important from their past. Talk about uh, some topic that's pleasurable, for example, a sport that they love. Um, express admiration for something that they have done or something about them. Maybe share their favorite memory and listen with great attention, even though you've heard it before. Um, engage in chit chat. You don't have to do all of these things. Making a warm connection only takes a minute. Just pick one of these and do it consistently. The fourth method is to watch your emotions. Remember how we talked about people with dementia being able to understand how we feel just by looking at us? Well, this is where watching your emotions comes in. We have to make sure that as caregivers, we're not triggering problems um, and challenging behavior because we're coming in with unguarded emotions. Only bring the emotions into the room that you want the person with dementia to catch like a cold. Your loved one then will reflect back to you the emotions that you've brought into the room. So you want to check yourself and adjust your emotions and, and the way that they display in your body and your voice and your face and how you stand before every single care task and any time things go badly. You want to step back, check yourself. A lot of times we're not happy about the care that we're providing. We're busy and we're stressed and maybe we're not that fond of that person. We need to fake it until we make it. So put on a happy face, and before you know it, you might actually be a lot happier because things are going better. So your facial expression, your posture, things like this would be um, angry and closed, and uh, don't use this kind of, kind of uh, posture. Any signs of tension, try to appear relatively relaxed. Use gestures um, and quality of touch we want to have them be very positive and uplifting. And the sound of your voice, the speed and the pitch of the voice need to sound relaxed. The fifth method is to make sure the person with dementia can see. There are a lot of changes that people with dementia have to how they process sensory information, including information that comes in through their eyes. This is not about an eye disease like glaucoma or macular degeneration. This has to do with how their brains process what comes in through their eyes. A person with mid-stage Alzheimer's, for example, is likely to have only about a 12-inch diameter of vision. They've lost their peripheral vision. So we have to make sure that when we say things like, what do you mean you can't see it? I put it right in front of you. That we really are working right in front of them. 12 inch diameter all around top and bottom, right and left. People with dementia also need things to have high color contrast to help them to see and understand objects. For example, a white cup filled with milk is going to look like it's empty because it's all white, but a blue, dark blue cup or a black cup or a red cup with white milk is going to look like it's full. We need to help them be successful by using high color contrast. So look at these two table settings and see which one would be better for someone with dementia. The one on the left is a symphony of white. Uh, it has white plates white napkin, white tablecloth, and clear glasses. The only difference here is, is some metal. Um, also, there's a lot of complexity on the left. There's multiple spoons, knives, forks, plates, and glasses. Too many decisions for a person with dementia to make. The one on the right has high color contrast. You have a dark blue against white, and then you have only one utensil. If it's the most appropriate one for the meal, don't make them have to make decisions. Or chance eating soup with a fork, give them the spoon if that's appropriate. Here are some additional resources. How can we help you? 
If you're a family member of someone with dementia or a healthcare professional who manages dementia care, caregivers, or families dealing with dementia, our offices can help you with strategies and solutions to your dementia care challenges. Contact your local Comfort Care or at your side office for information about our dementia care services. If you'd like to learn more about dementia-wise methods, there are many more that, than we have discussed today. Look for dementia-wise presentations and family caregiver support groups in your local area, and sign up to receive free information about dementia care and other topics at these websites. Thank you for joining us today.